welcome back. Boy, what a difference a day makes. Yesterday it was, oh, up in the 40s, raining like the Dickens in the morning. Uh, come afternoon, the sun's out. And then uh, just before sunset, it seems like uh, we got some snow flurries. And this morning it's in the low 30s. Uh, by yesterday morning, with all the heavy rain and wind, we had to use our generator. And uh, my significant other, Linda, uh, she wanted me to do a video because she said, what if I wasn't around and she needed to set it up? So hopefully I'll be able to cover all the bases. But first, a few important things. You need to familiarize yourself with your generator. This particular generator, the fuel is on the top easy enough to fill. Don't, don't fill it while the generator is running and you should let it cool off a little bit before you fill it. There's also a gauge on top to show you how full it is. On this end of the generator is your pull cord to start it. Coming around to the front, you've got your fuel shut off the fuel shutoff needs to be put, lined up with the uh, on. You've got a choke, which needs to be pulled out before you can start it when it's cold. Once it's warmed up, you shouldn't need the choke. There is a rocker switch here. You want to rock it to the start position. If you need to stop the generator, just a tap on the edge of that switch and it'll stop the generator. There are several outlets. These here are 20, 20 amp outlets. You've got four 20 amp outlets. 120 volt power, all with circuit breakers. If they should trip, you just push the button back in. And you've got one outlet that is 120 volts, 120 slash 240, and I believe it's 30 amp. You've also got an hour meter, and this meter simply says, is there any drawer on the generator? If you need to check the oil, you remove this orange cap, and the oil should be at the top. Coming around to the other end, obviously you got the handles to move it around with. One important item down here is a grounding lug. Don't forget, this generates a lot of power. It could kill you. Uh, so extreme safety is always noted. This is a grounding lug. When I use a generator, I always make sure it's grounded. On this end of the generator is the exhaust. Uh, very important that when the generator is running, the generator is like, uh, oh, 10 feet away from the house. And the exhaust should be away from the house. Uh, CO2 will kill you. A lot of people have died from it. You can't run this in the garage or in the house. It needs to be outdoors, away from the house. In the garage, before you think about hooking up the generator, you need to understand the panels, the electric panels. This panel up here is what's called a double throw switch. The electric company is coming through your outside lines into your house and into your boxes when this switch is at the top. Our electric company is CMP. So when that switch is up, you're on the electric company. When it's time to swap over and use the generator, 
you take this switch and you pull it down into the generator position. That will disconnect the electric company and put the generator online for the whole house. For the time being, leave it in the CMP position because when the wire is hooked up, we don't want any current draw. So typically what I will do is I'll leave the double throw switch in the CMP position. And at this point, the reason you're hooking it up is because the electricity has gone out. So by leaving it in the CMP position, it's simply not sucking any power off the generator yet. I stretch my cord out. It's a 25 foot cord. And I'll zoom in hooking it up. This is a close up of the plug. And you'll notice that one of the lugs has an angle to it. I'm sorry, I'm trying to get it to where you can see it, but it's right there. It's very important because the way it plugs into the generator, it can only plug in one way. This is a twist lock plug. So, as you can see, right there is that angle on that one leg of the plug. So when you get this plugged in, line it up correctly, push it in, and give it a twist. The twist, by twisting that, you've locked it in so it won't come out accidentally. The other thing I use is a simple grounding cable. I connect it to the grounding wire that comes off the power meter. I then run that cable over to the grounding lug on the generator. Once those connections have been made, generating power output, the output will come on this line to the house. There is no draw. Nothing is turned on yet, so it's simply connected. Whenever you start the generator, you want to make sure that there is no draw. No appliances turned on. Nothing trying to pull electricity, because that will make this just about impossible to start. Once all this is hooked up, then you need to move the generator to a safe spot. A safe spot away from the house. And at that point, you can start the generator. Once the generator has run for a minute or so to warm up, then you would take and push the choke in, if the generator is cold. Uh, when you start it and the generator is cold, you'd want to push the choke in after about a minute 
two minutes after it started running. Once the choke has been pushed in and the generator is running at an even speed, then you can go back into the garage, take that double throw switch and move it from CMP down to generator. When you move that switch down to generator, with a generator run, you're going to hear the generator lug down just a little bit at first. That's because the load's been applied. After that point, it will recover and it'll run smooth again. And you're set to go, uh, more than likely until you need to put gas in it. So hopefully that is enough of an explanation. And uh, it's been probably three or four years since I've had to use this, so it'll probably be another three or four years before I have to use it again. This here is a Generac XG7000E. I've had it for several years. And it's uh, 7,000 watts, I believe. And it seems it's served the, the house well. We've used it in the middle of winter before. It runs a furnace. It runs a well water pump, refrigerators, microwave. Uh, does everything we need. Uh, just make sure when you do get a generator, if it's not this one, make sure that you get a generator that is capable of supplying the power that you need. Don't overload your generator. If you overload it, it's probably just going to trip a circuit breaker on the generator and stop working anyway. Uh, if it's got circuit breakers. If there's no circuit breakers, you might just burn your generator up. Or burn your extension cord up. I don't know. Safety first. Read the instruction manual. Okay, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Um, any comments? Give me some feedback if you'd like. And uh, until the next next one, uh, live safe. And uh, the weather's hopefully going to start. The snow's going to melt. And it's going to start warming up. And we'll be able to get more stuff done outside. Till then, please like and subscribe. Bye for now.